A portion of this video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. Hey assistant, can I get directions home? Getting directions to home. Also, what's the weather gonna be later? Here you go. This is the future I want. And this, I think, is what's gonna get us there. Apple switching to ARM, I think, surprised nobody. Their silicon was crazy powerful in the iPad and the iPhone. It made sense they'd want to control it on the Mac side. We know that, and within two years, all the familiar Mac products that we have right now will be powered by their own chips. There's no surprise there. But the more I thought about this transition, the more I kept thinking that Apple might have more of a secret agenda, a hidden agenda of new products coming outside of the Mac that was the real reason behind switching away from Intel. And that is what has me super excited for the future of technology. So there's been rumors for a while about Apple releasing one unified operating system that scales depending on like what device it's on, whether it was a version of iOS, a version of Mac OS, or something brand new that became the de facto operating system. That's sort of been something that's been in the ether for a while, but prior to a few months ago, it didn't make sense. Now I think we're at a position where Apple could pull this off and do it really well. So I think the easiest thing here is iPad OS and Mac OS. If you look at the developer kit that was shipped of the ARM-based transition, which essentially is an iPad Pro inside of a Mac mini case, it's not hard to envision Big Sur running on an iPad. I mean, if you look at Big Sur, it looks like toggles and such are clearly not made for mouse input. It definitely look like they're intended for using your finger there. And if you just look, Big Sur feels eerily at home on an iPad. So Apple has made it pretty clear in the past that a touch-based Mac is not the right decision for them. They wanna keep their products separate. But if you take Apple at their word, we wouldn't have an Apple Pencil. We wouldn't have a big screen iPhone. We wouldn't have a smaller iPad tablet. And that list goes on and on. You can't always believe what the execs say or give them the benefit of the doubt that perhaps their opinions and the industry trends tend to change. So that's obvious, right? It makes sense. Big Sur on an iPad or some version of it. I'm not the first to think about this. I'm certainly not the last. But what if we took that thought process a step further so for a lot of people, the iPhone is their main computer. And with Apple controlling the hardware and the software inside of it, it's become a powerhouse over the years. And it's Apple's most important product that they make. But before the iPhone came out, the Mac line was the most important product line that Apple had. But times and trends changed. So what if we say the iPhone will eventually go the way of the Mac? still be sold and still be important, but something new will come that'll replace it as the most important sort of paradigm shifting product in Apple's lineup. So what if it's like one unified Apple ecosystem? So if all your Apple products are running the similar Apple hardware, then theoretically they can all run that same operating system. Thus the experience would be tailored to that device. You don't need your watch to do exactly the same thing that your desktop can do or your laptop. You don't need your phone to do what your watch does. The experience can change, but the hardware and the software running it can be super consistent. So imagine this, Apple releases their AR glasses, let's say it's 2022 and you're strolling down the street with your new expensive pair of glasses on and you've got an augmented reality experience in front of you. Maybe you to talk to an assistant, find out the weather, send messages or see on the street, you know, your navigation if you're walking or driving. That's awesome, powered by, let's call it an A series chip with this new operating system on it. Then you take out your phone. Maybe you wanna make a phone call or do something phone based, run an app. You still have that same software that you've got on your glasses, but the experience is changing for a phone experience. Then you get home to your desk. Maybe you wanna do some more power intensive stuff. Maybe you wanna video edit or make music, whatever it is that you do. You get a more powerful experience there. Opens up to a larger screen. Same software, same hardware, but your experience changes depending on what you wanna do. Now this is just a taste, a theoretical example of what this unified operating system can be, but when you marry hardware and software across multiple platforms, it becomes awesome to at least speculate. And some version of this kind of exists today, but there's a lot of pain points there. 
Siri on your Apple TV is different than the Siri on your watch or your phone, it responds differently. The app experience is different from your phone to your watch and your iPad and your desktop. It's not consistent and it's not fluid. There isn't that sort of unified language across it all. And it kind of leads me to not use a lot of these features because the experience is just vastly different from like one Apple product to the next. So it kind of begs the question, like, right, why would Apple do this? Well, the answer, Apple clearly loves their ecosystem, right? That's what gets people inside of it. You've heard the term walled garden. With this system, those walls might get bigger, but they go up way higher. And the higher those walls, ultimately, the more money Apple can make. So all that is the future. It's probably a future that I've got made up in my head. But the real question is what's going to come in the next two years as a transition starts to kick off and lays a foundation for that crazy you know, future stuff I talked about. There's a lot of questions about the next 24 months. So before we keep going, I wanna tell you guys about Clean My Mac X. They've been around for years, but now you can download Clean My Mac X from the Apple App Store, directly from Apple themselves. It's signed and certified, so you know that it's an application you can trust. So if you don't know, Clean My Mac X, it's a really versatile software for your Mac. It can replace like dozens of optimization tools. So essentially it gives you full control over your Mac. One of my favorite features, it's called Smart Scan. It can scan files, it scans hidden storage, reveals a ton of junk that can easily be safely removed and free up a bunch of storage space. I think you'll be surprised actually about how much storage space you can free up in space you didn't know was being taken up. So it's not gonna touch any of your essential files, but can also scan for malware and viruses. We've got a feature also in there called Space Lens. It gives you a visual representation of your computer and what's taking up all the space. You get more control and you can decide what's important to you and, and what's not. Clean My Mac X obviously does a lot of stuff. I use it a ton for deleting apps. It doesn't just delete the app itself, but delete the files that go along with it. Again, freeing up that space that maybe you didn't know you had if you just took the icon and dragged it to the trash. So I think it boils down to being able to find files on your computer, put an extra barrier between you and those nefarious intentions, and it can speed up your older computers. If you wanna check out Clean My Mac X and you wanna either download it directly from MacPaw, the makers, or download it from the Mac App Store, we'll have all those links down below. Now, let's go to a big topic, transitions. And unsurprisingly, to predict the future, you gotta look back at the past, at the PowerPC transition, from that to Intel. And Steve Jobs claimed that was going to be a two-year transition. Stop me if this sounds familiar, but that whole transition was complete in less than a year. In fact, it only took 210 days to go completely from PowerPC architecture over to Intel. So this two-year roadmap that Tim Cook laid out, I think has given Apple a lot of extra breathing room. Uh, I would imagine this transition will be way shorter than that. So Apple didn't make this transition on the fly. They've been thinking about it for years and clearly have a plan in place. They're ready to execute. So the big question is, like, what are the first ARM-based products going to be? If we go back in time to the PowerPC transition, the first Intel computers that we saw was a MacBook Pro and an iMac. And I think that actually makes a ton of sense for now. Uh, no computer is more outdated in Apple's lineup, in my mind, than the iMac. From a design standpoint especially, it needs a refresh. The MacBook Pro, Apple sells a ton of them. It's one of the best-selling notebooks going. It would make sense that those two would be the launch products, the halo, the look what we can do on the ARM transition. And the other question is like, what happens from now till then? Should you buy a current generation, MacBook Pro, iMac, or really any Mac? And sort of, we always say like, oh, if you can, you know, wait, there'll be a new processor coming. This time though, it's like a big fatty, like absolutely wait, because we don't know what's going to happen to those Intel computers. Sure, Apple will probably support them, but what about app developers? Will they continue to support the Intel apps as they move this will go to ARM? Will they not? Will it go the other direction? There are so many unknowns. If you can get by with your current computer, I would 100% wait, see what the next few months bring. Perhaps the biggest like head scratcher to me of this whole thing is a computer that a lot of folks were waiting for, the Mac Pro. 
and Apple had tried it with the trash can. They seemed like they were abandoning the Pro and they came back guns blazing by all accounts with the Dream Pro computer. People are spending upwards of $20,000 to spec out their amazing towers. Now, admittedly, this is a very small group of people that need, want, or can afford the Mac Pro, businesses, studios, and that kind of thing. But what happens to those folks that just dropped that kind of dough on obviously an Intel-based system? There's rumors of maybe a card coming in that you pay a little bit extra money and then you get you know, Apple's newest ARM architecture. I don't know, but if you go back to the past again, to the PowerPC transition, the Mac Pro of that time, Power Mac G5, and that thing was obsoleted after five years. And if you think about five years is a long time, it totally is for a laptop for an iMac. But for a computer that costs upwards of $20,000, uh, five years is not that long. People are considering they could keep updating it, upgrading it, make it faster and sort of get that longer lifespan out of it. Personally, I'd probably be a little annoyed or maybe frightened of all the money I just dropped on a Mac Pro with this new transition coming. And I would imagine that Apple has a solution for this question that I'm sure a lot of people have. They haven't said it yet. Right now, I feel like we need to know what that is. But the flip side of all that is there's hope for this transition, right? We should see faster processors, more regular updates, better performance, unified architecture. The laundry list goes on and on. This is just like the awkward stage. This is like the Mac computers are like 13 and trying to ask a girl to a dance. It's a weird time, but if we fast forward to, you know, the late 20s, 30s, things get more mature. So we gotta get through this weird, gross mustache phase to get us to the full beautiful beard that could ultimately be the new generation of Macs. Regardless of how you feel about Apple, for them to make the transition, like you know they have a plan. This wasn't done as a knock to Intel, it was done to give them more control. And in Apple's minds, the more control they have over the products, the better they can make the products, the faster they can release it, the more money Apple can make. And ultimately that's their goal, right? They're a business, a publicly traded company. So I'm excited about what that future is going to be. What Apple looks like with the Intel chains thrown off. And this is just a fun exercise. I spent nights because I'm a nerd, thinking about what these new products could be and what the future might look like. And it's kind of why I made this video. I wanted to share it and I wanted to get those nighttime thoughts out and start a discussion about what you guys think the future of Apple product can be. And this unified operating system is one that I kept coming back to. It might not sound like the most amazing, sexy thing, but what it enables and what it could bring us is really cool. So regardless of what the future is going to bring or be, pretty excited for it.